In this episode of Microcasts, I'll cover the Device Explorer app in the Onion Cloud. I'll show what it does and talk about how you might use it in your projects. We'll also look at some of the gotchas and how to get around them. One of my favorite things about the Onion Omega compared to other IoT platforms is the focus on the I in Internet of Things. Lots of platforms provide the hardware side of things, and the I is just, here's a Wi-Fi connection, go do the interwebs. That's fine, but the Onion team is really trying to add value by making that internet story a first-class citizen, and the Device Explorer is a great example of that. Before we talk about the Device Explorer, we need to spend just a minute talking about the Microbus. The Microbus is an open WRT bus architecture that allows communication between various daemons and applications running on an open WRT device. Now what that really means as an Omega user is that it provides a way to remotely access functionality of the operating system through the cloud. So let's take a look at this. You do not need to remember how to do this through the command line. I just want to provide some context to what we're going to be doing here. And so if we come into our terminal here, you can see that I am SSH'd into my Omega. Let me just clear the window here. And if we type in the command ubus, stands for microbus, and hit enter, you'll see that we get some options and commands that we can pass to that. And so let's just, I'm going to clear again. Let's do microbus list. And this will give us a list of commands that we can run through the bus. Things like DHCP, file, host APD, a whole list down to system and UCI at the bottom. Now for any one of these, we can get more information. So let's say ubus list, maybe the system command. And if we do a dash V, which stands for verbose, we can get a little bit more information. You can see that the system call has several sub options like board, info, upgrade, etc. And next to those, you will see what looks like JSON. And that's because it is. It'll show you the board info and upgrade. Do not take any arguments. That what the, that's what this shows. And then things like watchdog and signal take several different arguments or can take several different arguments. One thing you will find with this microbus stuff is that there is not a lot of documentation, not even on the OpenWRT site. It's really kind of a poke around and figure it out. And so let's just show you an example of this. Let me clear again. And so let's run one of these. The way we can do that is we just do ubus call. We want to call into the system and let's call the board sub option that we saw. We go ahead and do that. You'll see that we get a bunch of information, things like the kernel host name and even information about our open WRT release. Okay, let's run one more. Let's run info this time. And you'll see that that returns things like uptime and memory usage among other things. Okay, so again, you don't need to remember how to do this through the command line. I just wanted to show what the microbus um, system looks like and how it would work if you did want to use it from the command line. Now, how does this apply to Device Explorer? It's a great question. And to do that, we'll pull up our Onion Cloud window here. You can see that I am logged into the cloud, just cloud.onion.io. And this is the dashboard that we've seen the last few episodes. Now, before we go into Device Explorer, you need to have a device associated with the cloud. And you do that through Device Manager. If you don't have a device set up already, please go back and watch episode 25. I talk all about how you associate a device to the cloud and get that all set up. So we've already done that. Let's go straight into Device Explorer. Okay, and in here you can see that device that I set up previously, microcast underscore omega. And the little blue cloud icon over here indicates that the device is online and ready to go. So we'll click on that and it brings us into the Device Explorer. You can see we have a list of commands over here that looks, well, looks exactly the same as the list we just saw in our terminal window. DHCP, file, host APD, if we scroll all the way down, system UCI are the ones at the very bottom. And so let's use that system command that we were just working with in our terminal. If we click on system and go back up, you can see we get the sub options here. If we go to board, it brings up our three windows over here. The curl command we'll come back to in just a minute. I'm not going to talk about that quite yet. The command editor, in the case of the board call, is empty. And that's because there are no parameters to pass to it. And then finally, in the interactive command window, uh, this is where we will send the command and see the response. 
we use this little email send looking icon. We click that and you'll see we get that same output that we just saw in the terminal. Now what's interesting and important to note is that I am just at a public address here. I could have run this command from anywhere in the world. As long as my Omega is turned on and connected to the cloud, I can log into the Onion cloud, come into Device Explorer, execute this command and get a response. That's pretty neat. Okay, let's see info. We ran that one as well, just to show you. Same response. Now you'll notice in here we have this little red circle with the line through it. These are just ways to collapse part of the JSON. So if you just want to focus on some of these commands, it can get quite lengthy. You can collapse different parts to just focus on the pieces that you care about. Okay, so I'm not going to go through every command that you can run in Device Explorer, but I do want to point out just a few of them. So uh, we'll go ahead and leave this here for now. And we'll come up here to File. And I want to show you some of the gotchas uh, for the first time so you don't spend time uh, getting stuck in some of the pitfalls that, that I came across. So if we come up to file, you can see we have different options, read, write, list, stat, etc. And let's say that we want to create a file uh, on our Omega. So we'll come into the write window here, and now you'll see the command editor looks different. There are actually parameters that we can pass to the file write call. And the first one is going to be path. Now, one thing to note about the command editor window, you can see that the placeholder text here, string, string, boolean, integer, that is telling you what the type is of the parameter. And so that's important to note, and I'll show you a little bit more about that in just a second. But for now, uh, for our path, let's do root slash test.txt is the file that we want to create. The data that we want to send to that is, I don't know, hello from the cloud. And I think we're ready to run. We're not going to do anything with append mode or base64. And we'll go ahead and click the send command. And you'll notice that nothing happened. I'm still looking at the output of that last system call that we made. Now if I bring my terminal back up, let's bring this back up to the top here, do a clear, and I do an ls to list, you can see, oh, I have a test.txt file. And if I cat the contents of that, you'll see it says hello from the cloud. So this is one of the gotchas that you need to be aware of. Some commands, not all, and in fact, most don't do this, but they don't update this output window. And so you'll hit the send command and you'll think, ah, nothing happened. But in fact, something did happen. And so, you know, I talk about these gotchas, the Onion team, I have submitted a bug for this, and the Onion team is so quick about fixing these things. This might not even be an issue by the time you watch this video. Now let's take a look at an example of how it's important to know what these types mean and how to fill them out. So if we have the append here and it says Boolean, let's just change this out and do call number two. And then for append, it says Boolean, I say, yes, true. I want that to append. And I go ahead and I hit send command. Again, it's not going to update. But let's go ahead, instead of looking in our terminal window, let's use the cloud again, the device explorer. We'll come up to read. And before I read it, I want to point out another gotcha. And that is that these boxes get reused and reused inappropriately. Base64, you can see, is an, is an option for the read command, now has my data from my write command. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And now the path is root slash test.txt. Let's go ahead and hit send. Oh, it says error, microbus unknown error. Now, this is one that you might see often. And the very first thing that you should check is to see if your command parameters were actually sent. And for that, we can peek up in here into the curl command window. And I'll talk more about what you can use this for in addition to just checking your arguments. But the first thing you can use it for is to check your arguments. And it's right over here next to this X post. There's a dash D. And the dash D is the data that it's going to send with the call. And you'll notice it has path and base64, the two uh, command options. And you'll notice that path is empty. That's because that while the input box here reuses the text from your last call, it doesn't actually populate it. And so if you'll notice, I will go ahead and back off one of these T's. I'll just delete it. Right away, it puts it in there. And I can put that back. And now that looks a lot better. I'm going to look 
uh, the path is now correct. It's root test.txt. And now I should be able to run the command. And you'll see I got call number two. But wait a minute. It just says call number two. What happened to my hello from the cloud? Well, if we come back to the right call, what we tried to do before was append. So let's do call number three this time. And remember, you're going to see the same thing. We need to, the path up here is empty. So we'll just put that character back in to fix that. And now in append, if we type in true again, and then we look up here, append is still empty. And that's because this is JSON and true is actually not with a capital T. It's with a lowercase t. So if we change that right away, you'll see append populate. That is a valid Boolean. And if we go ahead and write it, again, there's no response here. But if we come back up to read, you can see how these boxes being reused gets real annoying really quick. And send that. You can see call two, call three. That worked. A good helper for the format of these uh, different types is if you come into the little I info here to take you on the tour, I'm not going to go through this whole tour. You can do that on your own. If we just click next through here a few pages, it will list all of the different types, string, integer, float, boolean, array, and table, and show you the format for all of those. So if you ever can't remember what the format of one of these types is, if you just come into the little tour, it has this reminder page. It'll show you the format for any one of those. Great. Again, let's just show a couple more of these. If we come back to list, and we take the path out here. I'm having issues with my Omega here. It goes offline and comes back online. I'm not sure what's happening, but we'll go ahead and ignore that. It should come back online here. This might be a good test. If it does go offline, you will see this status code 404 device offline. Uh, that is something that'll happen if your Omega shuts off for any reason or loses connectivity. Uh, so actually kind of glad that it happened while I'm filming this so I can show you what that looks like. Okay, my device is back online now. I will go ahead and send that. And you'll see on the list, it'll just, just like it would on your terminal, it's gonna show you the directories, things like that. We can do that on our root folder where we just created our file. Run that command, you'll see the test.txt file there. And we can even, you know, stat these things you can play around with. You can see the, the status of our text.txt file and it'll show that information about the size and times and things like that. And we can even get really serious here with the exec command. And let's say we want to do a remove. Now the params on this you might think is root slash test.txt. We want to remove that file. But if we back this all the way out, you'll see that the type is array. So the format is going to look like this. Test.txt. Close that out. We'll go ahead and send that. We'll get a code zero. And if we actually come back to our terminal here, you can see that our file is now gone. We just deleted it. So a lot of different things that you can do from the device explorer, very powerful uh, of the options that you have and the commands that you can run. One more that I wanna show you just for sort of a, a gotcha in to show you that the documentation is not all there is if we come down to the onion command and then you'll see we have a Wi-Fi scan. And that's pretty neat, maybe scanning the Wi-Fi networks. Uh, but if you come in, you'll see there's a device command. Well, I'm not really sure what device means. So what I'll do in these cases is I'll just run the command. Sometimes you'll get an error message that will help you figure out what you're missing. In this case, I just get no results. And so that's a little weird. When I first ran this, I thought, oh, device. Hmm, let me come over here to my device manager. Maybe it's this device ID. Let me grab this. Go ahead and copy it, come back over to the device explorer, paste it in, get rid of this tab here, and let's go ahead and run that. And I still get no results. As it turns out, this is looking for the interface device. In our case, that's going to be WLAN0. That's the uh, network device on our Omega that provides our wireless connectivity. So if I put that in there and then I run the command, you will see that I get the various Wi-Fi networks that are in range of my Omega. While all of this is very cool, we can run commands and we can see output and it's in this fancy JSON format. The real power of this is not necessarily to be able to run the commands from here, but to be able to run them from anywhere. 
And that's where this curl command window, um, this box up here really comes in handy because this shows you the format of the call. These are all just REST API calls. And so to illustrate that, uh, they have this curl command. If you've never used curl, it is just a simple utility on uh, Linux, also on Mac, that makes HTTP calls. And this, uh, are, these are arguments, standard curl arguments, uh, to make the call from your command line, just in a terminal window, and get the results. So let's see that in action really quick. What you can do is you can copy this out. And what we'll do is we'll just paste it into our favorite text editor, just like sublime text. I'll paste this in. And you need to put your API key in here. Okay, so what we wanna do is backspace out, not just to here, but all the way back to the colon. And then we'll come back into our cloud and we need to come into the key manager to make these calls. When you do it from the device explorer, it takes care of the API key for you behind the scenes. But when you make it outside of the onion cloud, you need to provide an API key. And to do that, we need to come into key manager. You can see I already have an API key set up. If you don't, go ahead and watch episode 26. I talk about how to create that key and associate it with your Omega device. And once you have that, you can come back and continue on here. So let's come in here, grab this API key, copy it, come back to our text editor, paste it in there. And now we have a full command. We'll copy the whole thing all the way back to curl. And let's uh, go ahead and move this out of the way. Bring our terminal back and we will paste it in. Now when we run this, it is going to, oh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to run this from the Omega. Good point here. We don't wanna run this from our Omega, we wanna run this from just our normal laptop or any device for that matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a new tab here. This is just a regular uh, directory on my MacBook. Let me paste the command in again. And we'll go ahead and run that. It's gonna go out to the cloud, find your device, run it, get the results, and pass them back to your local session here. And you can see I get that same JSON output. Now that is pretty cool. Remember, this does not have to be run from a machine that's connected to your Omega via the USB cable or even on the same network. You can run this command from anywhere. As long as your Omega is online and connected to the internet, you can run these commands from anywhere. All right, and that concludes our brief introduction to the Device Explorer app. Again, the best way to really get a feel for it is to hop in and play around with it, go and try different commands with different options, figure it out. Again, the documentation is not great on these. Uh, you have to do a lot of just jump in and figure it out. Uh, but the real thing I want you to remember is that while the device explorer in the Onion Cloud is neat, the real power comes from the ability to execute commands via RESTful API calls. This means that you can write an interface to your Omega in any language you want and have access to it from anywhere in the world with an internet connection. That is pretty powerful. As usual, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments, shoot me an email, or even reach out on Twitter at Kevin Sidwar. I respond to every single person that reaches out and always love hearing from viewers. Also, if you find these microcasts informative, you should definitely subscribe. That way you can keep up with the latest and greatest. Thanks again for watching, and as always, until next time, happy hacking.